Um, he's one that has been in our midst for a couple of years, and I could only say that I've witnessed from not only reading his materials, um, but he himself, who puts himself out there for people like us to sort of benefit from a lot of the teachings in the books and all of that good stuff. So I think as a role model, um, if you haven't followed these books, um, he's written several others uh, to make sure you go online and search it out. And Stedman, I, all I can say is that you only see a piece of him um, at any one given media point, but there's so much to him and it's very rich. And many people don't know that one of his first jobs was as a prison warden, I think it was, a prison warden. So when you think about his roots and where he came, and he took his career actually so much further than probably what many people would have ever thought. And, and I won't hold this against anybody, but again, coming out of New Jersey, I can only say that because I come from New York. But again, when you look at all the wonderful things in New Jersey, um, you know that there could be, there are many families that have really um, become the hallmark. And we've heard about a lot of those in the news. But I'd like to think of Stedman as being one of those wonderful people. So welcome, Stedman. Here you are. And here you are. You're right on right now. OK, thank you so much, Janine. And thank you, Tom. Uh, thank both of you for all that you do. First of all, I didn't start off as a prison warden. I started off as a prison guard. Oh. <laughs> and I, then, I moved in the then I moved into uh, the recreation department, uh, and then I um, moved into the education. I became supervisor of education of, uh, of FCI Inglewood, which is in Chicago, which is how I got to Chicago. Actually, I transferred from Denver. Um, but it's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, I get very excited about the work that I do uh, because it's been a long road to teaching people how to find uh, their identity, how to find out who they are. And, um, you know, when you, when you don't have an identity, uh, what happens? Well, when you don't have an identity, you don't know where you're going. When you don't have an identity, you let somebody else define you. When you don't have an identity, you are oftentimes marginalized. When you don't have an identity, uh, basically you're quiet. When you don't have an identity, you have to act like you're somebody. When you don't have an identity, you have to kind of find your own way. And sometimes you mark your body up. Sometimes you do all kinds of things to find your identity, to find your value, to find out who you are. And the world really um, confuses you a lot of times because the world uses the external world as a way to oftentimes define who you are. And it puts you in a box a lot of times. And, and so when you don't know who you are, basically it goes like this. You wake up in the morning, you wash your face, you brush your teeth, you get something to eat, you get the kids off to school, you work all day in, in the afternoon, I mean, work all day, come home in the afternoon, you spend time with the family, watch TV, go to bed, maybe you dream, that's Monday. What do most people do on Tuesday? They do the same thing. What do they do on Wednesday? The same thing. What do they do on Thursday? They do the same thing. Friday, they may go out. Saturday, they wake up. They, they sleep late. They wash. They clean up. They uh, mow the lawns. They shovel snow in the wintertime. They uh, watch TV in the afternoon, watch sports. They go out in the afternoon. On Sunday, a lot of people go to church, and they eat chicken dinners in the afternoon, and they get ready for Monday. <laughs> And how long can they do that for? Some people would say, you know what? I've been doing that all of my life. And I have no more in the end than I had in the beginning. So if you did the same thing you did yesterday as you would do today, as you would do tomorrow, what have you done? Nothing. So the missing piece for 6.5 billion people in the world, probably 99.99% .99 of those people are stuck in the box doing the same thing over and over every single day and will never maximize their potential as a human being. <coughs> then they go to school and they say, you know what, I'm going to be educated. And they go to school and the educational system teaches them how to memorize and take tests, repeat the information back, they get labeled with a grade. If I ask them what they learned two weeks later, they say, I don't know. So if you're doing the same thing over and over every single day, which is nothing, Everything you learn, you forget, which is nothing. Nothing for nothing is nothing. So I would say most of the people in the world are in a survival mode. They're just trying to survive and navigate the system to figure out how, how much value can I create. Well, 
there's not there's not much value you can create if you never turn the brain on. If you never think about how to take information, education, make it relevant to your heart and soul, transfer it back to your mind, and then transfer it to the American free enterprise system or the global market. So you, you, you never can really maximize your potential or reach or develop your identity if you have no starting point, if you have no foundation for growth and development, if you can't source information and make it relevant to who you are, to your purpose, to your mission in life, if you can't organize your life around the 24 hours that you have, which is the only thing that makes us all equal, everybody has 24 hours. So when we go out into the world, we get these socially constructed labels. And people start defining you and they put you into a box and they said, you know what? I have to use this socially constructed label to define you. So International Women's Day, congratulations to all the women. You know, it's a wonderful thing around the world. But women are put into a box. And they're put into a box and they're socially constructed because they call you women. And based on that, they prescribe a different program for you or a program for you. And in that program, they determine what your program is going to be. And everybody marches to the beat based on that. And as a woman, you're never able to maximize your potential as a human being because you put your own self in the box. And so if I move to African Americans in this country or black people in this country, they're in the box. And they're told probably a lot of times that they can't make it because of the color of their skin. And they, they probably respond that way. I know I did. I had a race-based consciousness growing up. I lived in an all-black town surrounded by White County where they said nothing ever good comes out of Whitesboro. So I had a race-based consciousness. I thought it was about white America. I thought it was about government. I thought it was about um, uh, other people being empowered as opposed to understanding how to empower myself. And so you're put into, you're defined by the outside world, by your house, by your car, by your money, by your title, by your family. Uh, I grew up in a family with two disabled brothers in my family, grew up with low self-esteem, lack of confidence in myself. I also had a family label. You, 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 you're put into a box based on your, 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 your title, your job. You know, in my case, a lot of times, a lot of people know I'm put into a box based on my relationship. And so you're defined by that. And so you're defined by all of these external things, your religion and all these boxes that you're put in because the world wants to control you. And the way they control you is I can, if they can socially construct a box I can put you in, you can't get out of it because now you're trapped uh, based on the way that you think. So the difference between the 99% the followers and the leaders are this. The difference is, is that one thinks one way, the 99% thinks one way, and the 1% thinks another way. 1% runs the world, everybody else is following. And you know what that 1% that is? You know what it's called? It's called leadership. I lead, you follow. I lead, and I tell you exactly who you are. I lead, you work. And so my goal is to transform people's lives from a slave to an owner. And I'm not talking about slave in terms of race. I'm talking about slave in terms of mentality. To move you into a, a mentality where you can begin to take total responsibility for yourself and learn that there is a process for success. Um, I, I try to move people into, into a producer mindset as opposed to a consumer, a, a follower, a, a, a leader's mindset as opposed to an owner. And so it takes a lot of work to do that because that's an internal process. So, you know, I'm a right brain person. And what happened with me, the reason I'm able to write books or create a company, I have a company and I teach education around the world, and speak around the world, and I've been in lots of different businesses, is because I understand process. I learn process. And I'm a right brain person and right brain people are visionaries, they're pretty emotional, they are uh, big picture, they're more creative, they're artistic. 
And if you just have that, if you just have those natural abilities, that's fine. But un until you're able to understand the value of a left brain, which is analytical, more technical, detail, more executional, uh, and so more an analytical, like I said. And when you put those two things together, when you are able to put right brain with left brain, then you have a whole brain. And so when I discovered that the, the success of my life, growing up right brain, is only going to happen when I can put left brain information, when I can put process information. And putting those two things together, I realized it was a missing piece of my life, and it was process. So I created a nine-step success process, which allows me to focus on not only the vision or the dream, but the process of how to execute that. And so I took time to learn the American Free Enterprise System. I took time to learn as much technical information as I could so I could take the education, which is left brain, and apply that to my right brain natural abilities to create success. So I call this nine-step success process a nine-step success process because it helps you change the way you think and it also teaches you to organize information around your identity. Now, if you can take information and make it relevant to your purpose and to your identity, guess what happens? You begin to grow in the 24 hours that you have every single day. Oh, you now begin to improve as opposed to you staying in that socially constructed box which says all you're supposed to do is work for me. And so now you begin to think and process and you're able to take the resources of the world. The world is a collection of unlimited wealth and resources. Often we limit our potential by moving in our own small circles because nobody tells us how to do it. They just say, get a college degree, go to work, get a job, and try to figure it out for the, for the rest of your life. Some figure it out, most don't. And so the idea of being able to take this nine-step success process, and I'm going to go through it pretty quickly, is based on um, taking control of your development, understanding what to focus on, and it's really based on the most powerful word in the world. The most powerful word in the world, as I know it, is spelled L-O-V-E, is love. And so the missing piece in a lot of people's success and leadership ability is love. So what does love mean? Well, from the religious aspect, love, God is love, all powerful. Love, what does love mean? Love means that you can co-create with the world. Love means that you can begin to assimilate all over the world and deal with people from all backgrounds, regardless of their their race, their religion, their background, their accent, whatever the case may be, their color. And so then you can now transcend your authenticity, which gets beyond the label that you're given, and you move more into a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection, which is, the, which is the real connection. And so to be able to focus on love, and then how do you manifest that? Well, you manifest that, that by laying out a piece of paper, and writing down everything you love in your life. So I do it all the time. I, I organize my whole life around what I can discover that I love. It's a discovery process. So you're discovering what makes you feel good. You're discovering what is natural to you. You're discovering what you should be focused on. You're discovering... Um, your talents, you're discovering your, your gifts, you're discovering your passions. And I said passions, not a passion, but many passions. You know, you can travel around the world and decide and figure out and organize the world in a structural way and figure out what exactly can you love. And I call that the richness of life. And so if you take love and you focus on developing everything that you love, all the foods that you love, all the places you love to travel, all the kind of work that you love to do, all the kind of people you love to be around, all the music that you love, all the you know, programs that you love, anything that you love, 
And you can organize that around the 24 hours that you have, which is the only thing that makes you equal. Everybody has 24 hours. And take information, source information from the Internet, from Google, from magazines, from books, from experts, from all those, 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 those content deliverers, and deliver that information and segment every part of your life based on not just one side of your life, not just one part of your life, but every part of your life. Family, relationship, friends, community, service, organizations, school, institutions, business, <coughs> priorities, all those things that are relevant to, to who you are. And create your own future based on that. Now you have a foundation. Now you have a base. Now you have a process for growing every single day. Now you can multiply that day times seven, you got a great week. Now you can multiply that week times uh, uh, four, and you got a great month. Now you can multiply that, that month times 12, and you have a great year. Now you can figure out where exactly are you going to be if you organize and, and create a process for executing your goals every single day based on what you love and based on the opportunities that you have in the world. Second step of the nine-step success process is vision. Create your vision. Okay, I'm motivated. You got my attention. I, am, I have a relationship with myself. I am connected to who I am. I have an identity based on what I love. It's in my heart. You can't take it away. And now I can begin to create a vision. Why is vision so important? Well, vision is really your dreams. Vision is your hope. Vision is your destination. Vision is uh, where you want to go. Vision determines your social economic status. Vision allows you to see beyond your, your current circumstances. Vision allows you to see beyond the poverty. Vision allows you to see beyond the bills. Vision allows you to stay in the game. Vision allows you to overcome the financial tsunami that's happening in this world today. You know that you have a bigger vision than what you have to deal with every single day. So vision changes the way you think. Vision gives you an opportunity to look beyond where you are and see the future based on where you can be. It's not where you are. I know where you are. I'm not concerned about where you are. I'm concerned about where you're going to be. And so vision is your story. You don't have to have a lot of money, but you, you better have a vision. You know, countries and cities and schools and institutions were, start, were started with a vision. So vision is out front, always out front. Vision is never looking behind you. Vision is not living out of your history. Vision is living out of your imagination. Vision is shaping your future. Vision is who you can be. The third step, okay, I've, 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 got, my, I've got a foundation for growth and development for thinking. I can begin to think. You mean I don't just have to be a robot and go through the motions every single day? I can source content which allows me to begin the process of learning. You know, there's three ways to learn. Number one, you have to have the content. Where's the information coming from? Nothing in, nothing out. Number two, you have to have the cognitive ability to learn, which is you've got to be able to think and be conscious of what's around you. Are you conscious? I would say 99% of the people are probably asleep. Third is that you have to be motivated. So I'm motivated every single day. It's in my heart. It's in my soul. And I can feel it. And you can't stop me. The second step is I have a vision. I'm in the education business. Vision is worldwide. How big should your resources be in education? Worldwide. How, how, should your net, how big should your network be? Worldwide. How big should your opportunities be? Worldwide. How big should your, your money be? Economic opportunities be? Worldwide. Third step is you have to have a plan. Okay, I'm talking big about vision. I'm talking big about my dreams and aspirations, but you know what? I can take the right brain and put execution with that, and now I can begin the process on how I'm going to get it, make it happen every single day. So that's why education is so important, because now you can take education, which is left brain, and you can structure a process for executing every single day based on science and math and all of those things that are, that are set up and designed for you to learn how to get it done. 
How do you have? How do you make it happen every single day? What do you have to do? What goals are you going to are you going to create for yourself? Can you complete those goals? How are you going to organize your day? What are you going to spend your time on? Well, some people spend their time watching TV. You ask them what they watch. Two weeks later, they say, I don't know what I watch. You know, so do you have a process for organizing your life and making things happen because you can execute? And do you have a way to source the content that will help you execute so you can get things done so you can create value in your life? The value that you give yourself is the value the world gives you. The world sees you as you see yourself. So the question is, is how high can you raise your standard? How good do you think, how, 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 how high do you think about yourself? What, what's, your, what's your standard? What's your, what's, your, what's your class level? What's your ability to improve and, and get better based on your thinking? Fourth step is master the rules of the road, your guiding principles. You got to have some rules and universal principles. They're tied to your vision a lot of times. Number one, you got to work hard. Why do you have to work hard? Because whatever you focus on, whatever you focus on expands. You don't put anything into it. You don't get anything out of it. And this is physics. It doesn't happen just because you want it to happen. It happens because you are, you know, you are putting work into it every single day. You're making it happen. Uh, another rule of the road is you got to have a positive attitude. How big is that and how important is that? Well, a lot of folks are focused on negative energy. What do you get with negative energy? You get negative. Negative energy gets you negative energy. Negative thinking gets you negative results. And so based on who you are, well, based on your experiences, that, you know, how you grew up, a lot of times your program based on what you learned in that household for 18 or 19 years or more. What did you learn from your father? What did you learn from your mother? What kind of habits did you get? Was it negative? Was it positive? Do you still have that, that same energy? And so when you carry that energy, what happens is that people feel the energy when you walk in the room. It takes them three seconds to size up who you are based on how you walk, how you carry yourself, what you say. And so the idea of being able to now, we'll talk about finding your identity. Identity is not an external process. See, it took me a long time to understand that it's not about the external, it's about the internal. And people put, they put me in the box, and every time I walk out the door, they put me in the you know, relationship box, the Oprah box. And for what I have to do is I, say, I have to say to myself, you know what? These people don't define me. It's not what how you define me. It's how I define myself. So you have to control your own energy. You have to find out what makes you tick. You have to find out what makes you happy. You got to be able to change your thinking. When you change your thinking, you change your feelings. When you change your feelings, you change your energy. When you change your energy, you produce a, a an energy that goes out into the world that's either attractive but not attractive. Another rule of the road is determination, perseverance. Uh, now, if I go to step five, step four, master the rules of the road. Step five, step into the outer limits, overcome your fears. There's only two emotions, there's love and there's fear. Either it's an asset or a liability. It's either negative or, or positive. And so what we try to do is accumulate on a daily basis everything that's good and everything that focuses on building value for ourselves. You're either on the right side or you're on the left side. And so it's a process. Success is a choice. It's the accumulation of assets that you can create every single day that over a period of time will what? Will shape your future. It will lead you in that direction. It's not going to be some big thing that's going to happen and it's going to hit you over the head and all of a sudden you realize, oh, I'm successful. It's a process of being successful when every single day. I'm, I'm around someone that does that. I mean, Oprah Winfrey, you know, who is an extraordinary human being, her success is not based on something that happens real big. It's detailed work, focus work, visionary work, working every single day. It's called small steps, small steps.
small steps that make up large steps over a long period of time. Step six is pilot the season to change and the nine step success process is not so much what happens to you but how you respond to it. I worked in the prison system for five years, a lot of folks in prison based on the fact that they have no internal capacity to deal with change. Somebody steps on their toe, they go off. And so what is your internal capacity to deal with changes? What is your, how strong are you? How, how mad do you get? How angry do you get? How upset do you get? How positive can you be? I mean, those are all massive, ma you know, it's, it, it's uh, pilot diseases to change. You know, how many changes do you go through from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed? On International Women's Day, let me just tell you, women go through a lot of changes. There's no question about it. I was talking to a, a young lady and uh, I think I was in Texas. I was in Texas. I was in Dallas, Texas. And she was telling me, uh, we are in the, I, we're doing an education seminar that day, and she was in the room, and we were talking, and she was telling me, you know, about her kids, and she has four kids, and, and all her kids are on the honor roll, and I said, and she was telling me that she was a single mom, but I was most impressed when she told me that, uh, number one, of course, when she's got four kids, she's taking care of four kids, and they're all on the honor roll, that's impressive in itself. Well, what else is impressive, she's working two jobs. In the day, she's working in the education department. And at night, she's a bouncer. And she's taking care of her kids. And she's doing it by herself. And she is just as proud. And she's standing tall. And that's what women have done throughout the world for generations after generations after generations. Um, so uh, step seven, build your dream team. It's the next step after pilot the seasons to change. Got to have a team. No one makes it alone. No man or woman is an island unto themselves. You can't make it without somebody helping you. You can't make it by yourself. Very difficult to do that. And so your team is predicated on how strong or weak you are as a person. So when we talk about leadership, which is everything, leadership is really hard to hard to get because it's an internal process especially if you're talking about identity leadership the ability to be able to find yourself and then put together process and vision and your ability to uh, understand who you are and purpose and all of that together to be able to lead <coughs> so you're leading based on your natural abilities you're leading based on what is right you're leading based on the fact that Leadership is tied to your soul. It's tied to your purpose in life. And to me, that's really the, 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 the true leaders who are somewhat servant leaders, and they have to lead. You know, it's the Martin Luther Kings. It's the, it's the Mother Teresas. It's the, it's the Gandhis. It's those people who, are, who, are, who have a conviction about leadership. And so you're, you're, when you talk about building your dream team, uh, your team is predicated on how strong or weak you are Weak person, weak team, strong person, strong team. Uh, I learned this a long time ago that you don't pick mentors, mentors pick you. Yeah. And they pick you based on what? They pick you based on saying to themselves, you know what? You don't belong with those 99% of the people who are followers. I need to pull you out because you work so hard on yourself that you're different that you need to be among the good old girls club and the good old boys club, and I'm gonna pull you out, and I'm gonna help you because I see so much potential in you as a person. Step eight is win by decision. Life is about taking information, education, making it relevant to your purpose in life, like I said before, making it relevant to your identity, making it relevant to who you are, transferring them back to your mind. That's what I got. I'm able to take information, source it, you know, figure it out, analyze it, make it relevant to who I am, grow it, develop it, build on it, and improve it, and then apply it to the world I'm living in in the 21st century. Why is that so important? Because manufacturing has been shipped out of this country. Jobs have been shipped out of this country. People are coming out and graduate from school, from Harvard and Wharton and some of those other places, and Stanford can't get a job. People are going to live a long time 
They got lots of bills. Sometimes at 65, they thought they could retire. They got to go back to work again. And so what are we talking about in the 21st century? We're talking about ownership. We're talking about being able to own your own, source your own, develop your own, and then apply those, ta uh, apply those talents and skills to your own development and allow yourself to be able to figure out how to navigate the system despite the structural processes that are in, in place to sometimes keep you down, the glass ceilings that are designed sometimes to keep you down, the uh, lack of opportunity sometimes in certain areas that will keep you down. And so the key is that you have to be able to navigate that system. And I think that's why the, the love is so important. Because love allows you to not be angry about it. Love allows you to focus on what you can do as opposed to what you can't do. Love allows you to say, you know what? I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to work harder, learn harder. And when the opportunity comes, I'm going to take advantage of it because I'm going to focus on the positive and I'm not going to have the negative destroy my own aspirations and my own dreams and my own hope. And so the, the, what I'm saying to you is that we have to keep the flow going. We've got to maintain. That's why determination is so important. That's why the word never quit is so powerful. Because if you don't quit, it's going to change. Like this financial tsunami we're going through right now, it's going to change. But you just have to stay in the game. So when it changes, you'll be right there in the midst of it. And, you'll, and you haven't missed one beat. You haven't missed one thing. You can take the learning experiences that we have, take what we learn through this tough time, and apply it to what we can do to make us better. You know, they often say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, win by decision, last step, commit to your vision. Well, that's an important word. You know, I talked about passion. I talked about vision. I talked about master the rules of the road. I talked about building your dream team. All of this doesn't mean a whole lot unless you decide that you're going to transform from a follower to a <coughs> leap. Now, what's that mean? That means you can no longer be a victim. You can no longer blame anything on anybody else. You take total responsibility for your development. And the beautiful thing about this is that I'm sure I'm talking to, not only talking to you, but talking to a lot of people online, that all of, all of us have the ability to create whatever we want. We can shape our own future. And that's what I'm teaching. I'm teaching that there is a process for success. And when you understand the process that's relevant to you, then you don't have to worry about the personalities. You don't have to worry about all the other external things that make you think that you can't do it. You don't have to worry about all the illusionary things that are, that are designed to make you think that you are uh, not good enough or that you uh, accept being a second-class citizen. And so, again, the difference between the 99%, the followers and the leaders, the 1%, understand who they are, they understand their abilities, they understand where they are, they are aware of their surroundings, they are conscious of their behaviors every single day, and they, and they can predict the future based on shaping the future based on a structural process. They're able to take the talents and the skills and the natural abilities and put that with education, technology, and development and they control their own destiny. They work hard, they're passionate about their work, they're serious, and they can create a legacy for themselves and their family. They understand, they make it their business, they understand the financial industry, capitalism, how it works, and all of their boundaries. They source information from everywhere they go. They're trying to get information and make it relevant to their development. They understand how to build value. And they're quiet. They don't say anything to anybody. All they do is go back and they, they take what they learn and they put it into the lab and they create whatever they want based on their aspirations, their dreams. So when you talk about making a commitment, the nine-step success process, you know, commit to your vision, 
you have to have the fire in the belly. You got to want it. You got to make a decision whether or not you want to, uh, you want it or you don't want it. It's a choice. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. So the universe really is there to help us. The world's a collection of unlimited wealth and resources. Often we limit our potential by moving in our own small circles because of our fears. If we change the way we think and feel about the world, we can create anything that we want. And, and it goes back to what Dr. King said. And I often say this and recite this when he talked about becoming the best you can be. And I never will forget this. He said, even if it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Handel and, and Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here live the great street sweeper. That sweat his or her job well. If you can't be a pine on the top of a hill, be a scrub in the valley. But be the best little scrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by the size that you win or fail. Be the best of whatever you are. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be the best, all of us, of whatever we are. Thank you for the opportunity to have me speak to you, and I, I'll take some questions if you have them. Good. Thank you. Can we give a round of applause? Forward to the podium to ask a question. Does anyone have a question? Okay, well, I guess I'll start with one of the questions. Um, the curiosity around mentorship. Um, for all those people out there who have been waiting, how many people in the room feel like they've been waiting for the, a mentor? Or do you have a mentor? Are you waiting for a mentor? Okay, most people are waiting for a mentor. So again, when you think about it, what's the best way to attract a mentor or to figure out how you get one? And um, if, even if you're being the best that you are, many people may be still wondering why they haven't made a connection. Well, I think what's important about mentorship um, is to be able to organize the space, the career path you're in and the space that you're in, you're in so that you can source resources, which would include mentors. I'm in the education space. So in that education space, I've been able to organize a structure worldwide that will allow me to create a vision that will take me not only to this country, but other countries around the world. In that process, I try to be very focused on what I deliver, who I am, what my services, and, services are, and what I'm offering to my clients or to the public at large. So I have to be very clear on that. So when you're very clear, what happens, you begin to get other people who are also very clear, who say to you, you know what, I love your idea. I love your vision about where you are. You're in the education business. I'm in the education business. I love to talk to you about working together. In fact, I've got some folks that can help us take this idea to the next level. So your mentors are always, they always appear when you are clear on who you are, what you're doing, how you use your time, because leaders are looking for other leaders. See, followers are looking for leaders, but leaders are looking for other leaders. So as soon as you transform from a follower to a leader in your own mind, you focus on becoming an expert in your field, you're building value, all of a sudden everybody shows up because you're starting to look like you're trying to be successful. You're, you, you look like you know what you're talking about. You look like you are trying to go somewhere. You would start to organize things. You're not like the other 99% of the people who are sitting, about, sitting around <coughs> waiting for somebody to, you know, drop something in their lap. You're actually proactive. You're doing something. You're creating something. And so that's when people appear. When the teacher is ready, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. 
Are there any other questions? <coughs> questions? Okay. We have a request for you to come to do a book signing, so we'll talk about that. At Artist Square Group Gallery. Okay, at her gallery. So I'll pass that along to you and I'm walking right over right now. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Yes. Any questions? Come to the front if you can come to the podium, that'd be great. Hi Stedman. How are you? I'm, an I'm good, thank you. And you? Fine, thank you. I'm a college educator at a community college, and as I sat here listening to you, some of what you've said has resonated so deeply with me because I am now going through an upper and a lower level of um, so the core social problems. And I was talking to my students about the tenets of success. I'm wondering if you would be interested in coming to Springfield, Mass, to do a college presentation. You have to talk to my agent, Janine, over there. <laughs> OK. Well, I will do that, Mr. Okay, well, Graham. That's you know, I will do that and see what we can well, bring to the college can, communities if, here. If I can say something, it's very important for college students to understand early on what courses they should take, what courses they should be taking, who they are, <laughs> what their identity is, what their career path is, what they love to do, what are their talents, what are their skills, and so that, so that they can now source the information that's even that will be relevant to developing a skill set for the future. Yes. So you can't wait until you graduate from college and then all of a sudden say, you know what? I'm looking for a job. Well, you're looking for a job with 5,000 other applicants. And your chances of succeeding in life will probably just be average because you haven't been able to create a bigger vision about what's possible for you based on your talents, based on your skills, based on what you do well. And when you begin to do that and source information early on so that every summer you know where you're going to work, Every time someone you meet, every time somebody comes across you or that you meet somebody, excuse me, that you meet someone, you're able to say, you know what, I'm going to follow up with that person because that, that's, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to go into technology. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to go into biochemistry. I'm clear. And so for four years, you're walking around, you know, with your head in the, head in the cloud not knowing where you're going, how you're going to get there, or what the process is. So students learn that early. They get a chance, well, a high school student at 18 gets a chance to say, you know what, I'm 18, 19, or 20 when I graduate. I've got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, maybe even 100 years. So I've got probably 70 good years to develop a process for continuous improvement based on who I am. You can't possibly fail if you have that mindset. Okay, thank you so much. And I just wanted to follow up and say for everyone who wants to have Stedman here, give me a call tomorrow, I'm all ears. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Another question? Good evening, Mr. Graham. Oh. Um, I'm doing well. Uh, my name is Al Lozana. I'm a, a professional staff person at the University of Connecticut, and I really, uh, enjoyed your talk. I actually came in on your second point <laughs> and I heard you mention um, uh, the importance of having a positive attitude. And you talked about how uh, everything is basically negative or positive. And, uh, and you spoke about how people develop negative attitudes by their upbringing and their background. And I'm wondering in your experience, uh, are people able to turn that around? Folks who have grown up, been brought up and reared in negativity, uh, tend to have a negative worldview and tend to drain uh, the life out of positive thinking people. <laughs> so, uh, so as a positive thinking person, I always wonder sometimes um, when I'm dealing with negative persons whether uh, it's worth the investment to try to turn it around and I'm not quite sure how I turn it around uh, or even if it's possible. So I just wanted to know what your experience has been uh, with that. Well, I, I, uh, I actually relate to that. I, uh, I grew up somewhat negative and I grew up with the glass uh, looking at the glass half empty as opposed to half full mm -hmm. 
and uh, because of my, you know, experiences growing up and all of, all of that. And I had some great experiences, and I lived in a wonderful community and all of that. But I also had a lot of, a lot of pain and a lot of anger. And when I realized that, um, I mean, I, I became very frustrated in a lot of situations because I knew I had a lot of talent. I felt like I had a lot of talent, but I couldn't express that talent very well because I didn't know how. And so when I realized that the educational system, the way it was set up, was limiting me in my ability to think and develop because the way it's set up and the way the world teaches us, it teaches you not to learn. It really teaches you not to think. And so you become very frustrated because you know you have all of these talents and skills and you're learning wrong. You're sourcing information the wrong way. When you reverse that process and take information and education and knowledge, which is the greatest gift you can have is education and knowledge, and you make it relevant to your personal development and your professional development, and you organize your life around the information, you become empowered. When you become empowered and you understand the process, and the process is the same for everybody, once you understand the process, you can communicate the same way to everybody because they understand the process, which is called they understand methodology, they understand how to think, they understand how to make sense out of things, they understand cognitive ability. Now you can communicate with almost anybody based on understanding how to learn so that you have unlimited ways to source content, use your cognitive ability, your thinking, and to become motivated because you feel so good about yourself. So the frustra frustrating piece is when you feel like you're left out, when you feel like you're a second class citizen, when you feel like you can't change your, your, your family's trajectory, when you feel like you can't be a contributing member of society, when you're stuck in a box and you feel like you can't make it because somebody's labeled you, or told you that you're second class and you bought into it because you have no other way to think any differently because of the way that you learn and the way that you source information and the way that you think and feel about yourself. And so it's a constant process of growing, developing, experiencing, having a different perspective, being around people who understand uh, where you, who you are, where you want to go, having friends that support you, having a support system that you can create for yourself and for your family and for your kids and teaching them that education and knowledge is everything and knowing who you are, you know, helps you define you as opposed to having other people tell you what you can't do or can do. So you take control, total control over your destiny. That's the freedom part. And when you get that freedom, then nobody can take that away. That's what I understand. And when you understand that, you have the whole world in front of you. The world's a collection of unlimited resources that take all those resources and make it relevant to your legacy and your development every single day of your life. And that's what everyone's looking for. Thank you, sir. And I think we'll take one more question. Okay, good. Hey, Stedman. My yes, name is. How are you? Good, thank you. My name is Waleka, and I work at Westfield State University, and we would also love to have you visit, so I will talk to Janine. Um, and I think you've answered part of my question. Uh, I think it's more personal. Uh, I'm a Latina, I'm a female, I'm 35, but I probably, to some people, look younger than uh, what I really am. And I am very proud of my heritage and my community. I'm civically active for the past decade, uh, served the governor and, um, and local. And um, it's, it's a challenge, so I guess I'm gonna ask for advice uh, because it could be viewed when you come in with all of the positive attributes that you've um, now given me a roadmap in the nine steps to success, sometimes it could be seen as um, intimidating or being forceful uh, because you, you are so clear in what you want to achieve in your goals. Um, so I try to channel that uh, to myself and to others because I'm very humble and I come from um, very uh, humble upbringing as well. Do you have any advice as to 
how to approach people that feel that? Well, I think that, uh, I mean, humility is the key. Is to never think you're better than anybody else because you are smarter, because you come from a different culture or a different background or company or because you're entitled or whatever the case may be. You know, it's really being able to, uh, you know, uh, having, I think the greatest gift is being able to be the same person regardless of whether you're talking to the President of the United States or a homeless person on the street. You're the same. And so it's not about, again, how other people see you. It's always about how you see yourself and what service you can give to the people that you are around, your family, your community, your, your friends. And that really is the key. I said, how do you how do you put yourself in a position where now you can learn as much as you can, do as much as you can, and then give it back to the people who are less fortunate? And I don't think you're going to have much of a problem when you do that. It's only when you start talking about yourself, when you think you're better than somebody else, when you think you haven't made when you have an arrogant attitude when you walk around and you're close fisted and nobody can you know move nobody can 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 touch you and so the idea of being able to have a humble spirit again i go back to love because love is so powerful in that it doesn't even matter and so it, you know a great uh tool that i use is that when i'm starting to feel insecure which I grew up insecure and a lack of confidence in myself. When you start to go to, go in that place, because it's dormant, it's still there. You can find it if you pull it up. What you have to do is you got to say, you know what? I'm going to replace the fear with love. And you can only have one emotion at a time. You can't have two at the same time. It's either you know, love or fear. So you want to replace it always with love. If you're in a, in a comfortable situation with somebody and they're maybe even a little irate or whatever the case may be, you just want to replace that intimidation or that fear with love and the fear goes away. And so if you can try to stay in that place as much as you can, we're not perfect. You know, we're not 100 percent. We all have our faults and everything else. But the key is, is to try to work and improve that thinking so that you know it doesn't even make any difference, it doesn't even matter, and nothing's going to keep you from your flow. Nothing's going to stop you from your vision. Nothing's going to stop you from accomplishing your goals. And then you can just kind of navigate the system, because it is about navigation. And you don't have to say one word. You, all you have to do is just know who you are and know the power and influence that you have as a human being and just work on it every single day, and everything else will take care of itself. Thank you. Well, thank you. And can we give Stedman a round of applause? Thank you so much. Thank you. And what a great time we've spent together. And I look forward to everyone getting out there and being even greater leaders than you already are. And I just want to also thank Stedman again for, for sharing his wisdom with us. And don't forget, we will send you an email with the new book on it. So if you can click through, if you'd like to purchase the new book, make sure that's something you tune into. Also, always saying thanks to Tom Fondon, who together we joined on these ventures. Uh, it, it's wonderful. As you said, it's, it's working as a team. That's very important. And, uh, and for Tom and I, we live that every day. And it's so much a part of us. And our daughter's not here. She's a part of it, too. Next generation. Next generation round of applause. So that's why we Folks here at Katuna, we're very appreciative. So thank you so much, Stephen, and we will be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. My pleasure. Thank you. Ready? Okay, good. Take care. We'll give a call. See ya. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Lo love your spirit. You and Tom are fantastic. Thank you so and much. You guys as well. Good. All right, we'll be in touch tomorrow. Bye. Sorry. Take care. And for those of you who are going to the reception, um, who's leading the way? Um, we will. Okay. We're gonna. Is everybody able to walk over? Yes. Okay. Everybody able to walk over? Does anybody need a ride? Is that is that would be helpful? Or? It's a, it's not far from here. It's about a block and a half. It's oh, not far. Oh, it's not. It's 
It's like what? Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so we can all go together. Yeah. Okay. okay. And thank you all for coming. I am so appreciative thank and you. hopefully it was so thank you. Yeah, so we're gonna have awesome. a good time over yeah. the reception and it'll be great. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry I couldn't get oh. earlier. I had a little traffic. I don't want to see